I really like this little tank. It's a 12 inch cube. I picked it up uh, on Amazon sometime last year and set it up. I've got a, uh, I forgot, it's been so long I forgot what I put in there. I think I've got uh, some of the fluval stratum and then uh, probably didn't need a lot of it, but it's in there. And then sand, and I think at the time I was using just Home Depot building sand, the builder sand, uh, and it rinsed it. And then on top of that, um, this finer aquarium gravel that you can see. And you can see how it's building mulm and it's moving down into the gravel. Um, and I say I probably didn't need the, the fluval stratum, but anyway, uh, I've got this dwarf Sagittaria, uh, Sagittaria, I think it's Subulata. Uh, I started with about four plants here, and you can see how much they've spread. They're really doing well. Uh, in fact, there's another one coming up way down here. And then there's, and I cannot remember this back there along the rock, coming up around it, there are some little, uh, it's like a little hair grass. I'm gonna have to go find out what it is, but you can see them coming up on the, the side of the rock between the rock and the glass there. It's not the Sagittaria, it's different. Um, and then there's a little piece of that. Just see it there. Let me see if I can stick my finger in there. Right there. And it, it trails back here. And then it goes around the side here. Just sort of vine through. And it's lost all its leaves down below because I think it's too dark. But there in the back, it's coming up. That's the um, Hydrocotyl Japan. That kind of clover-like leaf. And then... Uh, uh, Cryptochorine wetii, the red or bronze, and it's spread. It's done really nice. You can see the single base of it. That was the original base right here, and it's since set off a runner and another one on that side. And I think those are on, uh, I think those are rhizomes. And then I was talking about that in another video. You can see all this, this fine like hair. I do not understand that. I know it's, crypts do that. And I don't know if they're like little aerial roots, or not really aerial, but they come up and, and they feed out of the water column as well. Uh, and then I've got this little uh, Anubius glued to a rock originally. I think it still is. And underneath it's a piece of uh, Wendell of Java fern that broke free from one of these two Wendell of Java ferns. And... Uh, it just got hung up down there, so that's where it's grown. And the, I guess it's the narrow leaf java fern. And I love the way that it is growing uh, around that piece of wood, the rhizome of it growing around that piece of wood and just wrapping on there. And so then the little, and then also this stuff that keeps coming back, this hair algae. I'm gonna pull these little twigs out um, and drop some fresh ones in because I pulled some out already that helped get rid of um, get rid of some of this it slowed it down but now I'm seeing it again I really don't like it I know a lot of people don't have a problem with it but I do it's just that's all personal preference uh, if you're good with it yay and if you're not you know you got to deal with it and I guess another way and I've dealt with it in my 16 gallon uh, water box that's behind the kitchen sink where I have drained the water down in a water change and uh, just pipetted some hydrogen peroxide on it. Pull off the excess, just so you don't have as much to deal with. And then pipette some hydrogen peroxide on it. Leave it for about 15 minutes, and then go ahead and fill the tank back up after you know after the water change. And, and that will do the trick. And I guess you can even stick a pipette full of uh, hydrogen peroxide into the, into the tank and, and shoot it right on this stuff. I think it's more effective if you uh, drain the water and, and just because it gets the full dose of the peroxide that way or the hydrogen peroxide that way and then I've got um, these glow light tetras and this one's got kind of part of a tail it's always it came that way um, and then these are little try and focus there we go no, no, no somewhere in there there's some little least keely fish that a friend of mine gave me uh, and then cherry shrimp and then somewhere in here, elusive little devils that they are, and the coloration's almost the same as these Lee's Keeleys are pygmy quarries. 
And one of these days, I'm hoping they will spawn for me in here. Uh, the least Keeleys do. I keep seeing kind of a rotation. Um, there, oh, there's the pygmy quarries right there. Hey, yep, there they go in the back. Um, and they're glass surfing. And hey, I'd love to have those spawn for me. That would be very cool. The the red cherries just keep multiplying in here. They, they sort of, the numbers really uh, creep up and then they sort of settle back down. And, you know, there's this, they, I don't know if they hit like a happy medium or what. Uh, same thing with the least keely fish that I'll get. I'll never have more than about five or six. Um, I don't think they're very long lived, uh, and but they're constantly reproducing. So there's always a few of them in here. It's kind of cool. Oh, and there's a little bitty one right there. So that one's pretty new. Yep, right there over the dwarf sedge, going back over the rock. Yeah, I love this little tank. It's a lot of fun. I'd like to get a, I don't know, three or four or five of these. And I've seen some of this, the stainless steel uh, vertical racks for, for, you know, like kitchens and all. And there's a couple that I found that look strong enough to hold, hold water. This is, I said 12 by 12 by 12, a 12 inch cube. So that's uh, uh, one cubic foot of water is about 7.48 gallons full without any of the substrate, but all told. So we'll say eight gallons, uh, eight times eight, that's 64 pounds of water. If it was, you know, eight gallons, and then another, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 pounds. Um, so anyway, we're looking at, you know, 70, 75 pounds. So, you know, I'd want to get a shelf that can, or, or a rack that each shelf is rated for at least, you know, 80 to 100 pounds. So the thing doesn't collapse, because that would really suck. But anyway, and I've just got a little hang on back filter on this tank. And, and it's been, been working pretty well. It was a little cheap filter. Got that on Amazon. And also just a little little tiny sponge filter. I need to scrape the glass down in this puppy. Um, and let's see if we can, so can sort of see the layer of substrate there. Um, yeah, I need to, you know, and it's water change day, probably today or tomorrow anyway. Uh, mostly I top it off because mostly and it's running what's it, about 76 degrees. Mostly it uh, um, it just evaporates. So, because it is lidless, right? And this is a little uh, little Nicru uh, LED light. I'm gonna blind you there. And it doesn't have um, the, you know, the, what do you call it? The ramp up, ramp down. On, on it, it's just on off and, and you know uh, uh, various bright you know, brightnesses, I guess, and and it'll go to I think blue also. I don't mess with it. I just turn it on, you know, in the morning, turn it off at night, and let it go at that. But I really like this tank. I like the way it's planted. I guess you know I don't know if that would be too much in here. Throw a little female betta, or even even a male betta in here. <laughs> I'd seen another video, and I've seen it happen in one of my tanks. Uh, where the, they, they'll pick off the cherry shrimp, but you know, I don't think that's too big a deal. Uh, but I'd still like to, I don't know, maybe maybe just leave it the way it is. I don't know. It's it's big enough to hold the better, and I think I don't think it would overload the tank. There were uh, four, there were originally six of the glow like Tetras that I bought uh, at Petco uh, in La Quinta, I think, or it might be Palm Desert. Uh, where, where I live and uh, uh, two of them died right away and now I am only seeing three and it's been almost a year so I don't know if one just died and I haven't seen a carcass because there's shrimp in here they will clean up things really quickly if you miss it um, and it also might be might be just hiding in the bush here somewhere you never know but anyway that's kind of it and this uh um little story on uh oh and that that disc back there that's the lid of a betta cup um that i got propped between the the filter box in the back of the tank uh, because there's more room it the the filter's actually set up uh so it'll go over a little bit thicker back uh instead of just this little uh 
the little uh, thinness, you know, of just a single single pane of glass. Um, so it spaces it and keeps the filter leaning forward towards the tank instead of further back. So that was all. It's not the prettiest, but it works. And then you see all these little little bits of uh, window love that are broken free, and they are stuck on the filter uptake. And I will pull them off and throw them in the farm tank, and they just keep. They're the gift that keeps on giving. And I think I did another video maybe on, or if I didn't, I've got one in the works on uh, on Java ferns in general and how I, I really like Java ferns. I think they're really spectacular plants. They're easy to grow. They suck up a lot of, a lot of uh, nitrates in the water and uh, they provide a lot of shelter for shrimp and small fish and they just look cool. So anyway, I think that's about it. So anyway, thanks for looking.